Hello and welcome to the Celtic Way morning briefing for Friday the 10th of August. I'm Aidan McDonald, or Thursday the 10th of August, sorry. I'm Aidan McDonald and today I'm joined by Ryan McGinley. Ryan, how are you, mate? I'm doing good, mate. How are you? You're good. <laughs> good, mate. Good, good. Uh, Some start here. <laughs> start one had a shocker. Uh, plenty to talk about in terms of Celtic related news. Stuff that's broken in the last 24 hours and also some quotes from Brendan Rodgers' press conference. But before we start, if anybody that's interested, it's in the ticker tape down below and also in the description of this video. Subscribe to the Celtic Way website. Support talk call journalism covering the club you all love. The current deal we have on show is £4 for four months access. That'll get you kind of ad light content on the website. Features from Tony, videos from Ryan, data analysis from Alan Morrison, Duco James. Scouting pieces from Stuart Ross, one of which went live on the website today. We kind of had Gustav Lagerbelke, so Lagerbelke, sorry, which is he just went a very promising player that a lot of fans are excited about. A lot of kind of positive things on his scouting report, so that went live. So get yourself involved, guys, if you haven't already. The link to do so is www.celticway.co.uk slash subscribe. Now, Ryan, as I, as I try and uh, recover from that shocker of a start to this podcast, uh, of Brendan Rod or the player himself yesterday, uh, Gustav Lagerbielke was discussing how it'd be an honour to join Celtic. Uh, there was also some quotes from, I believe it was the sporting director of the club he's at, Ellsberg, saying there's also been clear interest from Celtic. So his exact quotes to a Swedish outlet were, it's an honour, it's an awesome journey and I'm very proud of it. And then the, the sort of uh, director of football, I think it was for yeah. Ellsberg said, We have had a dialogue in this case, there is interest, yes, but we are not in negotiation. Then the club must move from interest to acting powerfully and concretely. We're not there right now. The trade off is, as always, in the summer window, we've managed to have healthy conversations with our players. Many players want to leave Sweden, so we have dialogues when there is good time for it. So it does seem to be uh, a move that's developing at the moment. Uh, it seems to be edging a bit closer, as we've said in this headline. Brendan Rodgers didn't give, give much away in his press conference yesterday. He just said he wasn't really going to discuss specific players, but there's kind of plenty of things happening in the background, which is probably what you would expect mm. when a deal's maybe edging closer, but not fully confirmed. He's not going to want to commit to anything unless it's been signed in the dotted line. But are you happy, I guess, firstly, with how quickly this has progressed? We also heard about Starfelt. I think it was Friday night, Saturday morning, that it looked like he was going to be away. Brendan Orders was always confirming it after the game. And then since then, I think it's been reported that he, he has he's kind of flew into Spain. He's getting set mm-hmm. to complete a four-year deal with Kel Tabigo. So are you quite happy with how quickly the club have moved to, by the looks of it, replace Starfield? Yeah, I would say that it's helpful that they are staying within the same traditions of when they're when they're about to lose a player or when they have advanced notice of when a player is about to leave the club, then they're going to bring in somebody to directly replace them, sometimes before even that player has left the club, which is great. It means that there's no there's no gap in the middle where you need to you need to play a makeshift player in that position where um you, you, so the player doesn't go and then you're left you when you're caught in the middle with regard to looking for a new player, you're sort of scouting a player when that position is free. Therefore, it, it means that there is a space for that player to come in and just make the, make the spot his own before the original player has even left. I did see the picture of Starfield. I think it's with his agency. It looked like a sort of entourage he had in Spain of all his pals or whatever. I don't know if his agent's part of that. But it seems as if that's getting ever closer. I'd probably expect that to be announced today, to be honest, because it's been talked about. Fabrizio Romano is tweeting about it. You know, he's always tweeting, he's always tweeting about our players leaving the club. Um, I know it was him that uh, broke the Starfield news originally to Celtic back in 2021. Looking at those tweets again, brought back memories. I remember he was getting called a, a Christopher Iyer replacement. I don't know if he was. I don't know if he was that. He was maybe a different sort of defender, but. Those were the days, um, 2021, when we were scrambling to get players in the door because the, the squad was so light. But, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how quickly the, the Lager Bielka deal is um, concluding, it seems like. I think later on in the day, I think he was talking to Swedish the Swedish media and he was saying it's, it's close, basically. It looks as if it's going to happen. You know, we're going to replace one Swedish player, it looks like, with another. So I can't complain. I would urge everybody that hasn't looked at it already to look at Stuart Ross's um, 
to look at Stuart Ross's opinion, not opinion piece, his, his scouting piece, because it is a very, very good read. And if you weren't excited about him, then after reading that, I'm sure you would be with regard to what he can bring to the team. You just wonder who, where, he, where he's going to fit in this team, because we are expecting him to make the move now. You know, that, that initial contact has been made. Celtic need a centre-back. It doesn't seem as if there's any other solid links apart from Emba Yamba, maybe, but that that's very much a... I think that's more of a rumour rather than a, any speculation on his name. They might have inquired, but that's it. And, yeah, I, I feel like this one is, is going to get finalised in the coming days. It'll be interesting to see where he fits in the team, because then Celtic will have three... Fully fledged starting centre backs, I would say, in Karl Vickers, Navarovsky, and Lager Bielka. And that, that 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 breeds competition and it should breed success as well to go along with that. So yeah, I'm delighted with the way things are shaping up. He looks a good player, looks like a player that can develop. And he's been in a winning side over the past year, which is even more important. He's used to winning. Um Elfsborg are going for the league in the in, in the Swedish league. So he's got that winning mentality. So I'm sure it, it won't take him long to adjust to his new surroundings if and when he does join the club. Yeah, he looks like somebody who would fit into Brendan Rodgers' style of play, very sort of confident with the ball at his feet. I think in fact Stuart Ross picked that out as his main attribute. The thing that he was probably maybe not quite at an elite level at, but he was probably in a top percentage of in Europe in terms of being able to move the ball quick from the back and be able to play sign the diagonals or the ball in behind when it was needed. There was a few, there's a few uh, screenshots in particular, and you can get people probably seen the full clip versions of it on this, the old uh, YouTube compilations that have been going about. But he seems very adept at getting the ball forward quickly, which is exactly what Celtic need. And as much as Starfield, I thought he was a really, really good defender and. Whether or not this guy'd be as good a defender as Starfelt in terms of you know a reading of the game, sort of him blocking uh, shots, you know, understanding how to defend, but we don't know. But kind of from the brief spell, the effort looks more confident in terms of taking the ball out from the back, as did Navrovsky as well. So I think it's definitely an improvement to that extent. Whether or not either uh, Lager Belke or Navrovsky over time will be better full on defenders and Starfelt, don't know. We also need to. Uh, give them a few games to see how that's going to look. Hopefully they are. At the moment, it's probably too early to say. But yeah, he, he looks like a positive sign. He looks like he's got a positive, a lot of positive attributes. And I'm glad to see Celtic have moved relatively quickly. Obviously, we only heard publicly about it on kind of Friday night, Saturday morning about Starfield wanting to move on. But whether or not it's been in the works for a while, I don't know. But if, if it, whether it has or it hasn't, the fact is Celtic are moving very quick to get a replacement. And that's what you want now. Because you don't want to be going into... Uh, you know, Ibrox in a, couple, a few weeks when you're kind of down Starfelt <laughs> and you've not brought in anybody to replace him. Like I say, there's still, a, that a, the jury will still be out to see whether or not either the two defenders we've brought in are going to be a similar level to Starfelt defending-wise, but also need to give them a chance. But the fact kind of replacements have came in relatively quick is definitely a positive. I guess in terms of Brendan Rodgers' press conference, which we uh, touched on a wee bit earlier, he, like I say, he wasn't really giving a what away about Lager BLK. He said Celtic are sort of you know, having in discussions with some different players, but he wasn't going to come out on specific positions or specific individuals, which you kind of expect at this time of the season when it's maybe getting a wee bit closer to the end of the transfer window. Celtic playing their cards sort of close to their chest, but he, he did touch on a couple of things. If I just get this up, here we go. Uh, one of the things that he was kind of keen on was he, he was asked about, it's probably something that's kind of been going around all summer, about potential Kieran Tierney return. He said, I don't deal in what ifs in terms of players coming in. Naturally, there's an association with Kieran because of his past year, but there's nothing to add to that. I want to add to the squad, and if we can strengthen that, then I will be happy. Ryan, that's probably the response that we would expect, <laughs> really, because we know the kind of logistics wise would be difficult for Kieran Tierney to return to Celtic at the moment. Finance has been the biggest factor, obviously. I take it you weren't really surprised to hear those sort of comments from Rogers on that particular topic. Yeah, I've, I've got to be honest, I, I think the whole Kieran Tierney to Celtic thing is a non starter to begin with, just due to the wages and due to the fact he's already been a presence in the Premier League. He'll, he'll, he'll be a, a very attractive prospect for a lot of the Premier League clubs down there that may be trying to finalise their squad even on loan if, if a team teams can afford his wages better than Celtic can unfortunately so they can take a higher portion. Um, I know uh, Newcastle are bringing in fullbacks this window as well so it'll be competition uh, for places. You just wonder where he's going to end up. I just hope as a 
I know, I know he's a Celtic fan and he's, he's, he's Celtic leading. I just hope he gets the best move for his career because then it shows that Celtic have uh, have done well with regard to developing him if he's now playing at the highest level, both in the Premier League and for Scotland nationally in the national team. But I would, I would love to have him back. I would absolutely love to have Kieran Tierney back, but I just think it's very, very unrealistic. And I think Celtic would be better off trying to find a left back that you could bring in maybe permanently and, and build up. Uh, I, I think that was a plan for Burnaby. It hasn't worked clearly because he wasn't on the bench at the weekend. You know, he played against well, he played against Athletic Club, then he wasn't even on the bench. I don't think there was an injury to do with that, so it just shows it was tactical and he wasn't fancied. I think that's a bit of a damning indictment on a, a £3.75 million pound player. Only having Greg Taylor in that position to come in, maybe Liam Scales as well, he can cover in that. I think left back is a position and a place of interest where Celtic should should be improving on this window as well as goalkeeper. I don't want to mention goalkeeper too much because I know I can get in a rant on that for the next 10 minutes about how Celtic need a goalkeeper. We might still talk about that judging by the, the press conference quotes, but I think left back is a big position. Left back, it seems like a lot of left-sided players we need. We need a left winger as well, especially with the, the injury that we'll go on to talk about with regard to O. You know, we'll have players stretched that are trying to cover um, they need a first choice or second choice in a number of positions. And if they get injured, then it'll cause a domino effect on, on players all over the pitch. So, yeah, I would uh, I would say that a left-back is needed, a left-winger is needed still, um, and a goalkeeper as well. But, yeah, for, in terms of Kieran Tierney, I don't think that'll happen, unfortunately. As much as I would absolutely love it, and he, I think he would love it as well. I think it will happen in the future, but I don't think it will happen just now. I think it's maybe a discussion to come to, like if he does stay at Arsenal, I think he's got two or three years left on his deal. When that kind of deal finishes, if he doesn't automatically sign for somebody else, it's maybe more a likely sort of conversation you could have then. Uh, I think probably the most likely be he comes back at the end of his career. We know Kieran Tierney's had a lot of injury worries, whether or not he would be someone that would play on until he's, you know, 33, 34, 35, I don't actually know. But it's also one to keep an eye on, but yeah, I can probably agree with you around, and I think yourself and Tony and I have all been pretty <laughs> of that opinion from the start when these links were happening it'd be brilliant if it could but it just seemed like putting two and two together given Brendan Rodgers returned and obviously <laughs> the finances is the biggest sort of barrier from that being able to happen in terms of some other things that Rodgers touched on he was asked about players leaving obviously a few of the names that we would probably highlight as part of that would be a Yeti, a Soro, James McCarthy etc and this, when he was asked that question, Rogers said, eh, I think so. I think players will move on who want who will want some game time. I've spoken to a lot of the players in terms of where they stand. I think everyone we will have at the end of the window will want to be here. So overall, I expect some players to leave because we'll want more game time. I think that is probably just a polite way of saying yes. <laughs> it's going to be certain guys getting cleaned so. out. And he wasn't asked, obviously, about specific players there, probably because <laughs> he's not... He's, been asked, or Ange as well was asked a lot about guys like Ayeti, about Sorrow. So he had it was just kind of friends like a general question, and I know it is quite repetitive talking about it, but there's been a wee bit of sort of links here and there. I think Ayeti, there was potential something about Bao maybe being interested in him, his old club. Sorrow was a, a French second division team or something, so... Valencians. So I think uh, there's, there doesn't seem to be clubs interested, whether or not... They actually go for a fee or sell to pay them off, I don't know. But clearly, as much as we're still wanting players to be brought in, there's still a bit of work to be done in terms of trimming the squad round. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's one of those things where whatever club that they move to, uh, it's pretty much a guarantee. They'll have to take a, um, a dock in wages, basically. They'll have to take reduced terms in terms of going to a lower division team, such as Valencia, which is a, a second division French team for Soro, you know, I don't know what his level is because he was playing in the top league of Portugal last year. He seemed to have a good season by all accounts for Aruka. Um, maybe that would be too too low a step for him. Maybe that's why that didn't materialise because it was linked. What last week and nothing nothing's happened since then. So it's it's a bit of an interesting one in terms of a Yeti. The Basel deal make would make sense because that's where he had the best form of his career. That's why. It's probably the clips that were getting shared about with regard to when he when he was joining Celtic. You know, we were expecting this hitman to basically come in that was going to score every game, you know, and it, it did start off like that, to be fair. You know, you've got to remember he did score in his debut against Dundee United. I know looking back on that 
on that game. That that game was an absolute nightmare. Celtic just didn't look, they, they were going to play all day and not score, but he did score the one. And then I do remember him in those early home games, he'd be scoring goals. He actually got injured scoring a goal as well against Hibs, I remember. I think he just smacked the ball too hard and pulled something in his leg. So, and, and then by the time he came back from that injury, Celtic were in crisis mode, basically. So, yeah, that... I think there's still a good striker in a Yeti somewhere. I just think you need to play around him. And for Celtic, that's just not good enough, unfortunately. You need to be able to move about the pitch freely, which a Yeti has never looked like doing. He's never looked like the sort of guy that's going to press uh, a defence. Kyogo will do the running all day, and that's the difference. I think O wants to do the running too. I know he's injured, but he'll he'll be quite happy to drop in deep and do the, the dirty work. I don't think a Yeti was ever that sort of player. A bit of a luxury a luxury without the luxury, I would say, for a Yeti, for large spells of it. But he's not going to get a better wage than what he's got at Celtic at the moment. So I can see why. And I can't get annoyed at him for staying put and taking the best wages because as a footballer and as a person, you're going to go, you're going to stay at the place that's offering you the best wages unless you re- you're really desperate to leave. And if he wants to sit out for a year and maybe get a loan deal somewhere or just not play whatsoever, then... You know, Celtic gave him that contract at the end of the day. You can't you can't slag him. Celtic gave them those gave them gave him those terms and he's just sticking by them. So that's on the club, that's not on the player. Um but in terms of those two plus uh, James McCarthy, that's thousands of pounds every week that's just going away that isn't getting used on the team. You know, it's it's basically like it's it's like a charity donation because you're not getting anything back with regard to um impact on the pitch. It's a uh, it's it's an annoying one, but you know that's just what happens when you make bad deals, I guess. Yeah, that was kind of just symbolic of poor recruitment at that time that you're still sort of dealing with. But uh, I know Barkas has left, but you're still dealing with Ayeti and Sorrow several kind of years later. Unfortunately, fingers crossed it all get resolved in this window. Whether or not it does sort of him getting paid off, I don't know. I agree with you that I, I think it'd be hard for him to probably leave and to sort of take a lot lower wages just because he's getting, as I think it's rumoured to be at least 25k a week with Celtic. I just don't think he is going to get, get that anywhere else. That. I mean, Bow probably wouldn't be the worst move for him if he was to get a return there, but you'd imagine it wouldn't be 25 quid a week he'd be getting. So, yeah, he could be a hard one to shift, and it could be, unfortunately, he just goes out on loan again, which is probably yeah. not what M did away wants, but that could be the only way that it gets resolved. And then he's obviously his contract finishes next summer and he just leaves. Yeah, I think that's probably what is going to happen, to be honest, unless Celtic look for a mutual agreement with the player to end his contract early. But I think that's one of those ones that you gauge at the end of the window, once you see everything, once you see your financials, how much you've spent. If there is if there is scope to finish or terminate the contract, then you just let him go and then he can be a he can be a free agent and he can join basically whatever club he wants or whatever club wants him at that point. What I would say is it's it's been an absolute failure with a Yeti, but it didn't need to be this way because Celtic were originally going for a loan deal with an option to buy in 2020. They actually went and pushed. West Ham were offering them a loan with an option to buy in 2020. I know the other player that was linked with us at that point would have been a lot better than the one that we got. You know, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but we all knew we all knew that that, that, that Ivan Tony was a player for Peterborough. He was he was doing it every week for them. Um, there was a there was a loan with an option to buy with a Yeti quite clearly. But Celtic went and pushed for a, a signing. I think they wanted the bravado sort of approach. They wanted to show right, we're going for the ten. We're going to get this guy permanently, and he's going to be our striker. A lot of people thought that Edward was going to be on the way out because of that, but um, no, he did stay for another season. That this could have all been avoided, but it, you know you're you're stuck with him on a four year deal, and it looks as if he's going to see through all of that, Barden. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know, a, a shining, a shining light coming through and taking him off our hands. It feels bad saying that about a Celtic player, but at the same time, he's not contributing anything. He's not going to contribute this season, so it's better off if he if he just leaves the club. But whether that happens or not is a different story. Agreed, Ryan, agreed. Uh, Patrick McLaughlin saying they done it with Barkas, one of the commenters coming on here, obviously referring to the fact that he did pay him off. That mm-hmm. is true. I think it probably suited Barkas more to leave, really. Uh, just with his situation, <laughs> as much as uh, they, they both had not great seasons, I think it's fair to say Barkas was probably highlighted more. As a goalkeeper, he's going to get criticised more. Uh, uh, yeah, he spent a lot of that season out injured as well, so he wasn't even really involved. 
But yeah, he's obviously went to Utrecht to believe the team he was at last season. By all accounts, mm. he, did, he did pretty well. A few people saying don't mention Ivan Tony Ryan. It's still a slow subject, as you would expect. It's a slow subject for me, but that's why I talk it out. I'm Indeed. trying to talk it out of my, my psyche. Do you know, the thing is, he's um, the, the current thing that he's out banned for would have caught up with us as well. That's that's the, the, the mental thing, because his gambling was going on when he was at Peterborough as well. So that would have transferred to Celtic. So I'm not saying that Ayeti was the better signing, but you know, that problem wouldn't have wouldn't have occurred. So, you know, it's one of those ones. There's a bit of a balance, but you know, Ivan Tony would have been great for Celtic. He would have been I wouldn't have been I would have been all right with Edward, even if Ivan Tony came through the door that season. But do you know what? It's all that's all water under the bridge you now. You know, Celtic are in a much better place than what they were three years ago. So you can kind of look back fondly and say, you know, Ivan Tony didn't come at the club, but we get Kyogo the next season. So, you know, positives. Indeed, Ryan, always important to look at the positives. Once again, guys, for anybody that's interested, it is in the link in this description, also the ticker tape of this video. Support talk call to journalism covering your love by subscribing to the Celtic Way website. As part of your subscription deal, the current one we're offering is £4 for four months. You get videos from Ryan, features from Tony, interviews from Tony as well, data analysis from Alan Morrison, Duco James, scout reports from Stuart Ross, such as the one that we were discussing earlier on in this podcast. On very, very good. Apple. Wagger be okay, yeah, it's really good sort of insight into what he could potentially bring as that deal edges a bit closer. We really appreciate anybody that's able to subscribe, guys. I always used to do these videos Monday to Friday and also things like match reaction, interviews, uh, stats, bomb analysis at the weekend. So get yourself involved, guys, if you haven't already. www.celticway.co.uk slash subscribe. But as we sort of continue to work our way through this press conference round, another thing that uh, Brendan Rodgers was asked about was injuries and as the mm-hmm. title of this video suggests he mentioned that O is going to be out for a period of time I think he said the knot that he suffered was in the athletic friendly last week he then came back and he trained a bit on it and that basically made it worse so I guess firstly Ryan it's also a bit of a that O is going to be out I, I, I don't know the kind of specific time he's going to be out for. I think the rumour is between maybe like four and six weeks. Yep. It's not great going into the start of the season. Hey, or as the season started, sorry, he was going into the sort of first round of fixtures going up at Petaudry that they're going to be a player down because as you were pointing out earlier on, that'll you know, imagine mean that Maeda will have to go in as that sort of other backup number nine, which then leaves you a bit short in the wide positions, which will mean you're going to have to throw it maybe sort of progress Yang, for example, forward a bit quicker or bring Haksabanovich back in, who's kind of been out in the cold, really, since they've came back from Japan. So, yeah, it's not ideal, is it, Ryan? And, and it's Andrew, you hope he can recover relatively quick from, hopefully, as you know, four weeks rather than... Yeah, absolutely. Six. It is a bit of a blow, it probably does explain. I think O was on the bench at the weekend, is that right? Yes, he was, but he never he came off the bench. On, but, which, which seemed a bit weird, there was obviously nothing... I know, and then they've established since that. Yeah, Brendan Rogers seems to think he participated in the game, but I'm like, you didn't bring him off the bench, Brendan. Yeah, I, I, I watched the whole. It was a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, I've I, when he said that, I was starting to doubt myself. Well, I'd want to start to go back and watch it and check the subs, but yeah, in recent we just mean you know he was warming up at the side or whatever. But he, there was also a not mm. getting lost or some sort, and then they've established whether it was Sunday or Monday. Uh, or yesterday that he was struggling, but yes, it's not great. Obviously, it's good to have all your players available, and if it is a longer term, not it could be something that Celtic need to look at in terms of either bringing another striker in to sort of balance that out, or if I want to stick with my either, it's a sort of understudy to kill go through the middle, having to bring another winger in, which they yeah. probably need anyway with Jota moving on. But I'm I'm going to bring this comment up because I'm glad that I'm not the only person that thought this when I watched the, the or listened to the, the press conference yesterday. Dougie Sharp comes in to the comments. Thank you very much for the comment. He says, O oh, could be in trouble with Brendan for playing with an undeclared injury. It might be his downfall, to be honest. I don't know if you noticed his face. I don't know if you noticed Brendan Rogers' face when he was talking about it. It's as if... I, not this similar to remember when Neil Lennon was annoyed when Mikey Johnson played on with an injury. It just shows you the way the dynamic of a. Uh, I, I know, I know you don't like talking about that moment, but uh, I think it shows you that dynamic that managers get annoyed when um, when a player does continue on, especially when they're injured. Yes, they will be annoyed when a player is injured, but they'll be even more so if they aggravate that injury when they could have easily been taken off. I think that's a communication issue from O. To be honest, I think if he felt something, he should have had that alerted to the 
to the medical team after the athletic game, so he didn't need to aggravate it. Now Celtic are under a bit of pressure with regard to the striking position because Maeda at the moment is the starting left winger. If he then, <clears throat> if he then um, is playing back up to striker, if he was to get injured, who plays up front for Celtic then? Does Yang play up front? That's not ideal. That's almost as if you're playing um, Lewis Morgan up front all over again, which is just um, you're playing players out of position, which never ever ends well. Uh, we've seen that from from experience. We've seen it. <laughs> Cal McGregor playing at left back, you know, that didn't end well. Um, it, I know, I know that uh, Mikey Johnson, they they did get away with it a couple of times when, like your Lewis Morgan's maybe played up front for a game or two, but in the long term, it never works. So it's it's pressure. It's now it's now unneeded pressure when maybe an injury that could have kept him out for a couple of weeks now keeps him out until after the international break. I'm sure young Jurgen Klinsmann will be annoyed as well because there's an international break in between. Now all of a sudden the player that he rates really highly highly and the South Korean team won't be available for selection. So yeah, it does have a bit of a domino effect. So O should have told him. Maybe he didn't know the full extent of how bad the injury was. Maybe he was trying to be, or maybe he was trying to be. Um, Brave, I don't know, brave and, and, and just play through it. But it never ends well that. It always gets aggravated further. If you've got an injury, you'd be best just checking it out rather than playing on. We should say it's obviously like speculation about whether or not he, he didn't he wasn't honest with Brendan or just about an injury. We, we don't obviously know that as the case. We're just kind of trying to grasp that from the fact that maybe the manager didn't seem too happy at the press conference. And it was a bit of a departure from suddenly being on the bench. You would imagine that if somebody... That have a, if they knew somebody was carrying all kind of advance, he wouldn't be involved at all. Uh, so yeah, we should say like we're not obviously fully aware that that is the case, but it's kind of just speculation on our part. But in terms of maybe a bit of positive injuries, Brendan Rodgers gave an update on Alistair Johnson and Marco Tillio. Johnson's obviously picked up an injury in international duty. He didn't feature in the whole of pre-season. His last game, I believe, was the Scottish Cup final, of which he wasn't long back from an injury there. Tilio clearly joined as he was injured. So mm. I think he said uh, Alistair Johnson is back on the grass, running and working up in intensity, so that's really good. Marco Tilio is also out in the grass as well. He's moving well, and he, he expects both of them back in the middle of September, so another month or so away. I guess that kind of brings up a couple of points, Ryan. Firstly, i got just glad we've got some sort of update on both those players because it kind of just felt like we got told they were injured, didn't know how long they were going to be out for. Obviously, you know, you hope there's no setbacks. I'm kind of trying to take positives in that. Cameron Carter Vickers seemed to come through his rehab a bit ahead of schedule. So I'm not saying these players should be rushed, but at the very least, hopefully that date, the middle of September, they'll be available. It doesn't mean if, if that's the case and that's the way it plans out that Alistair Johnson is not going to be available for the trip to Ibrox. So I understand it's one game, a big game, obviously, and I'm not suggesting you go out and sign players just for one game, but what do you think is going to really happen <laughs> for the right back position in that game? And we don't need to go into too much detail. There's a lot of football to be played between now and then. Celtic have got, what, three or four games. So we'll probably be able to see clearly if Alisson keeps playing or Awata keeps playing or they bring somebody else in, that'll be the case. But I guess, assuming that AJ doesn't recover a bit quicker like Carter Vickers did he is out for the next month, how are you feeling about this right back situation ahead of that game, but also ahead of the, the other match before then as well? I mean, in an ideal world, you would want Alistair Johnson. He's your starting right back. And also due to the fact that uh, Alistair Johnson has never played under Brendan Rodgers, so Rodgers doesn't even know what he's like. I'm sure, I'm absolutely certain, never been more certain that a player, that a manager will love a player than what Brendan Rodgers will love uh, Alistair Johnson. He'll go through walls. He'll run through walls for Brendan Rodgers, as he would for any manager, I feel. It's not ideal, especially with a new way of of playing. I know he will be a more of a traditional fullback when he gets back into the into the Celtic team, but he was getting used to playing an inverted role. He wasn't as inverted as Greg Taylor was, admittedly. When watching him last season, it was clear that he was more of the traditional out of the two, whereas uh, whereas Greg Taylor was was moving into the the middle of the park quite freely. That's his sort of best role. But yeah, Alistair Johnson. Any team would miss Alistair Johnson, but especially Celtic and their defence. You know, you did, you seen, I think he was as big a miss um, when he wasn't playing as Carter Vickers was, to be honest. Carter Vickers is great in that central defensive role, but Alistair Johnson is just a safety net at right back and he's, uh, he, he keeps his ticking and 
you just desperate for him to come back as soon as possible. It's not ideal that he isn't playing against Rangers. It's not ideal that he isn't playing against Aberdeen as well. It's definitely a player that I would have wanted in that game, especially and at Rugby Park as well too, because they look as if they've really improved this season. So that's three big away games that he'll be missing. I'm not as worried about the home games because I think Celtic can negotiate them because they'll have the line share of possession in most games. But in terms of those away games, not having Alistair Johnson available as a blow, but I'm glad to see that he's back out training on the grass as well as Tilio and, you know, he, he's edging ever closer to, to making his return. I'm glad to hear that Tilio's close as well. Um, he's a bit of an unknown quantity because he's came in and we've not even seen him train or anything like that at all. He's came in injured. It's always quite weird to see players pass medicals, but they're injured. I'm guessing it's more to do with, like, heart rate and and stuff and to see if there's any irregularities in, in a medical, but to see a player come in complete a medical that is injured is a bit of a weird one but I'm looking forward to seeing more of him when he does break into the team judging by all accounts uh, f- from American reporters not American Australian reporters they are he has a very talent, talented prospect and one that is going to improve the team in the long term so I'm looking forward to seeing more of him Yeah he was a player that profiled really well when we had Stuart Ross scout him and it would have been good obviously we'd featured during pre-season to get a proper look at him but just glad we've got an update, Ryan, because you know what it, it can be like sometimes. Players are just kind of class just being out injured the long term. We don't mm. really know what's happening. And I was starting to worry that, look, they, I suppose Alistair Johnson has been out for a long term and you know if that was kind of in June he got injured, you know, that's over probably coming up to over two months. But I'm just glad we've got a wee bit of an update and fingers crossed there's no setbacks and maybe they even come back a wee bit sooner on that. Uh, but at least if we get in the middle of September, they're both available, that would be good. You're right that it's Alistair Johnson we missed for all those games, not just the Rangers game. That was just the one I thought was kind of worth highlighting because I know it's a game a lot of people will be thinking about, particularly given that the Champions League uh, first group stage games won't be taking place until after the international break. So you're kind of designated because everything's a wee bit later this year, no World Cup in December, thankfully. Like last year when everything was kind of condensed and it was about an eight-week spell or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, this that's why that's kind of probably the game that's been highlighted as sort of the big one before the break. But yeah, no pause. A positive injury update I think was good to finish on Ryan after the sort of old stuff. It was uh, good to hear a bit about Alistair John Stan Tillio, who's a player we're all excited by. But is there anything you want to touch on, Ryan, mm-hmm. just before we finish up? Yeah, it seems as if two of Celtic's youngsters are going out on loan as well, which is good. Two really good loans as well, with regard to Ben Summers going to Dunfermline and uh, McPherson. Is it Ben McPherson? Or are they both called Ben? Um, ben Summers, Ben McPherson, yep. Yeah. Ben McPherson, yeah, they're both called Ben. That's easy to remember. Um, yeah, the, the, Queen's Park, respectively. So two good loan deals. Hopefully they get a lot of game time. I think... Sometimes these loan deals can be as good as joining a team in the Premiership because two of these teams will be, you would hope, fighting for promotion at the top end of the table. So getting used to that winning mentality, Queen's Park are an ambitious club. So are uh, so are Dunfermline. They'll be desperate to get back to the the top leagues where they feel as if they belong. You know they're they're both managed well. Um, Queen's Park are managed by that uh, that Belgian coach and. Uh, McPeak that manages them Ferman, so really forward thinking managers. Hopefully they both get a good amount of game time and come back and, and make themselves available for the first team. But you're just hoping that they go in, make an impact, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what the we'll see what the situation is when they return in a year. But two two good loan deals. I'm, I'm glad that not every player is automatically just going out to the Austrian second division because as much as that is good to give one player a team, you need you need some players close to watch them and monitor their, their progress even closer. And and to just get used to first team football in Scotland, I think I think the two of them could excel in their respective loan deals. So yeah, it's a it's an exciting time for them and I hope they both smash it, to be honest. Fingers crossed. I mean, Queen's Park is still an exciting project. Obviously, they kind of did chuck the league away last year. They were kind of like high at one point and then finished third, had a disastrous time in the playoffs. Own Coyle's moved on. A lot of players have moved on, but they seem to be trying to use the own market to prop up their chances of getting promoted. Barry Coffey, obviously, going from Bayern Munich to uh, Queen's Park was probably seen as a big deal. These two players from Celtic, and yeah, that is a a team, as you're saying, Ryan, that will be aiming to try and get promoted. So the expectation will be to be trying to win every week. They've got one of the bigger budgets in that league, it's fair to say. So, yeah, I think that's a good idea for them to be going there rather than a team that might be fighting for relegation or fighting to stay up, sorry, to avoid mm-hmm. relegation. 
just hope they do get game time. It's one we'll need to keep an eye on. But yeah, it's I think it's definitely progress over another season for them in the B team anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Robin Veldman is the coach at a at Queen's Park just to just to sort of get his name right. But yeah, it was a very ambitious appointment by Leanne Dempster bringing in a guy that's basically been an assistant coach. I think he was assistant coach to Ronnie Dyla at, at one of these clubs at Standard Leisure, I believe. Um or he was the assistant at Club Brugge. He, um it was either or with regard to that. Um, so he, he does have that experience in, in manage or, or sort of assistant managing in the top leagues. So Sorry, that is Ryan. a good appointment. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, mate. I apologize. Let me just say it was Barry Hepburn, eh, as Steve McGoy puts out, not Barry Coffey. Barry Coffey was another Celtic youth prospect. So both called Barry in my defence. But yeah. Hey, I just to clarify that. Sorry, then continue. With I should you, get so. your Barry's mixed up, and I'll get my Ben's yeah. mixed up, mate. It's been one of those mornings, but you know we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. Um, yeah, that that's a good move for him. I think uh, I know the uh, I, I know the other player uh, is it Morrison. He he joined Wigan on loan, so it's good to get see those two boys that did go to Bayern Munich get some game time um, back in Britain. So hopefully they both do well. Fingers crossed. I, I think it's positive, Ryan, anyway, and we'll also be able to keep a close eye about being Queen's Park and it being and being in the championship. I, ideally you just hope that they come back and they have featured, you know, they've played 30 odd first team appearances. There's plenty of starts in there, and it's not just we cameras here and there. Don't want to be negative, obviously, but uh, Johnny Kenny was there last year. It didn't really work out. Uh, he's then since went back to Shamrock Rovers, I think, in Ireland. Which was also a bit disappointing because that was quite an exciting move at the time we thought. But fingers crossed uh, that these two players will have a little bit more success, Ryan. But I think we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for all the comments, guys. Thanks for everybody that's watching live, everybody that's also watching and listening on demand later on. Once again, for anybody that's interested, subscribe to the Celtic Way website. It's what talk about the journalism covering the club you all love, the current deal we're offering. Four pound for four months access, and uh, the link is in a ticker tape down below as well as the description. It's www.celticway.co.uk slash subscribe. Ryan, thanks very much for joining me, mate. Thanks very much. Just just a, a, a quick wee thing. There'll be a video going live at about three o'clock today as well. Where I'll be speaking to um, a, a very special person with regard to uh, Gustav Lagerbielke, a guy who has had um, contact with Lagerbielke over the past. 24 hours so just have a look on the the youtube channel for that dropping at around about three o'clock today should be an interesting bit of insight into celtics what we hope is celtics incoming defender lager bielka so just keep your eyes peeled on that and subscribe to the youtube channel for and you'll get a notification of when exactly it does drop yeah of course i as ryan points out they're screaming to youtube turn on notifications hitting the thumbs up button all that good stuff will allow you to see that video we're obviously trying to provide more sort of stuff like that on the new signings as much insight as we can get already got the scout report up from stuart ross so we'll get a wee bit more insight and we hopefully might have something special coming over the next couple of days with tony as to regard to this point as well so keep your eyes peeled if that all works out but cheers again for today guys uh, uh tony and i'll be back tomorrow to sort of look ahead to the aberdeen game at the weekend but until then have a great day and we'll see